Hello and welcome to the Ghost Era channel. <laughs> uh, my name is Anthony Kerrigan, and you can, it's an hour long episode, an hour long show into the subject of the paranormal. Uh, we are now joined by Sinead Houlihan from County Dublin. Hello, Hello how's it going again? again? And we are joined by formidable force called Richard Jones. Ah, hello. <laughs> hello, Richard. How are you doing there? All right. I got spooked by Donald Trump for a minute then, but. So, so tonight, folks, we're going to be talking about three subjects this evening there. If you uh, can join us tonight, we're talking about Most Haunted, uh, Derek McCoy's Ghost Hunts, and Jack the Ripper. So if you'd like to ask a question, put a question forward, uh, please do. She knows going to go through how you can contact us. Yeah, if you want to head on to our website at www.ghostera.net, um, you can email us um, on ghost underscore era 66 at yahoo.com or at the bottom of this live feed, you can actually ask a question if you wish to do so as well. So you can just comment on this. We'll be here for the next hour. So please make yourself be known. Don't be shy and get, uh, question us on anything. And Richard Jones is here. And then Anthony, you will take over this now. And, and if you're affiliated with any paranormal team or any tourist attraction, uh, please do say hi. If you want to put in brackets the name of the organisation, please do. We'll give you a good shout out. And if you have a question for Richard, please do come forward. Um, so we're going to start, Richard. How are you doing? Not bad at all. How are you? Oh, but brilliant there. And I'm just talking about, um, we are just talked before we came out on there about uh, distance cover there. So. Is there any way you discovered recently uh, with during the lockdown over in England? Uh, I've, I've discovered the front room. <laughs> <laughs> Ventured far, yeah. <laughs> and then I sort of, uh, I sort of then spend the afternoon in the back room, and then for a bit of variety, I hop between the two, and that's that's about it. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Yeah. I'm discovering a lot about Jack the Ripper though at the moment. I'm I'm ploughing right. through all the newspapers uh, from oh, the Victorian sure. era. Uh, oh, so I'm I'm, read, I'm reading uh, day by day, uh, I'm writing day by day how it occurred. So I'm doing a lot more on Jack the Ripper. So. Oh wow, that's brilliant! Yeah. And, and um, I suppose like um, talking to yourself there. First of all, I like to say like the first time I got to know you there, well, it was probably the book uh, Haunted Britain, and I'm not probably I was uh, yeah again in hospital reading it there. Um, but for Most Haunted, you were one of the first, probably, it started in 2002, was it Most Haunted? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I, yes, it, it did, yeah, 2000, 2001, 2002. And I think I joined the live, because I only joined the I was on, on the live ones. And I think I joined on the New Year's Eve one, 2003, I think it was. The Dick Turpin okay. one, anyway. And, uh, and how many of them did you do in total there? Ooh, uh, <laughs> Uh, it's difficult because I, I, my last one was 2005. Uh, so I okay, did. Uh, yeah. So and um, we did. We probably did two or three a year uh, from three then years. right through. We always did a Halloween one, and yes, yeah. uh, and then the last one was um, the very last one I did uh, was the Jack the Ripper one when we went hunting Jack the Ripper. Oh, uh, did, we didn't find we didn't find him, but he's yeah. he's, he's still out there. Yeah. <laughs> And like going back to uh, say like you obviously did the uh, haunted Britain and Ireland. Uh, is there any memories of Ireland you have any haunted experiences you had in Ireland? And... Yeah. Ah, oh, that. Yeah. I've got some. Oh, I've got some wonderful memories of Ireland. Uh, it's I I, I I I I haven't been there for a, so long now, and I just long to get back. But yeah, I think my my spookiest one was Moor Hall, which is uh, oh, okay. I think it's, I think it's County Mayo. Uh, okay. Yeah, but Moor Moor Hall was the, the spookiest place I've got I've been to. I don't know if anyone. It's where Tom Moore, the poet, was born, and okay. I, I I went there simply because. Uh, 
W.B. Yeats described him as looking like his face had been carved out of a turnip. And I thought, <laughs> just for that one quote alone, I've got to go to his birthplace. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I went to Moore Hall and it was it's a ruin. It's a complete ruin in the middle of a wood. Uh, but there is a way in. You can actually get down underneath it and go uh, and get in. And I, I managed to get in. And I was wow, walking yeah. around and it was on first floor level. And my biggest fear at that moment was any minute I'm going to fall through the floor. And so I was walking along uh, and then I went downstairs and I was just crossing what the, the main hall, which I mean, it was a ruin. I mean, we're talking about a place where all the plaster's off the wall. There's just nothing in there. And suddenly a door panel came aside and this lady's head popped in <laughs> and I jumped and she jumped. Uh, and she, oh, she said, I've never, I've never seen anyone here before. I said, I'm oh, sorry. I said, I'm sorry. I, I, I just uh, explored. And she said, oh. So she let me come out. And it turned out that it was a couple. And they'd actually retired from Liverpool to, to live in, in County Mayo. And we were chatting away. And when I'd been upstairs, when I was walking around upstairs, I'd had this very bizarre experience where I was in one room and I heard children laughing in the next room. And I went through into the next room and there was nobody there. So I was looking around, mystified. And then suddenly I heard it in the room I'd just come out of. And it was almost cliche, but it was like one of those, you know, the, the films where you hear that childish giggling like they're playing. It was that sort yeah. of laughter. And I thought, it's weird. And it happened a few times. And that's when I went downstairs. So I, I was talking to them and I said, uh, I said look, I said, uh, is, do you know if this place is haunted? And the lady said, uh, no, she said, it's, it's, it's my spiritual home. She said, I, I come here every day and I just love it. So she went in and her husband is this big burly liver puddly. And uh, he said, I oh, said, I never go in. He said, she loves it, but I, I, I never go anywhere near it. She said, she goes in, I stay here. Uh, and she came out and we were chatting away. And uh, the long and the short is there was a there was a postal strike on an island at the time. And they had to get their passport application back to London or back to England. So I was flying out the next night. So I said, well, they said, would you post it for us? I said, yeah, happy to. So uh, we did it. And because of that, we exchanged email addresses. And uh, when I got back, I posted it and sent her the, the tracking number. I said, it's, it's gone off now. Uh, three weeks later, she sent me an email. And now bear in mind, I'd not told her anything. I, it's all I'd said was, is this place haunted? I didn't tell them what happened. And she sent me an email. She said, I was there. She, she was, she said, I was at the hall this morning. She said, and I met the custodian. She said, I didn't even know it had a custodian. But she said, I met him and I had a fascinating chat with him about the history. And she said, at the end, I remembered your question. Is it haunted? So I asked him and he said, yeah, it's haunted by three children who died in a fire in the early 20th century. Oh. And I thought, oh, and, I, and I'd said nothing. Yeah. So, and I think that's that's one of the spookiest things that's ever happened to me. <laughs> Absolutely. Especially if you could hear them running around. But you can see them and they're just going couldn't, from room to room yeah. yeah I couldn't see anybody I just heard this laughter and it was yes, almost laughter. like uh, in one of the films that you see it's that that sort exactly. of laughter that children were yeah. playing but uh no I say that 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 did spook me <laughs> that is really spooky yeah and the people who were there were they living there or this room no. or what were they doing no. or they they they, they they lived in the village yeah uh, and they they just go and walk up to the hall i mean it's a love it's a lovely location i mean the, the whole around uh i forgot I, i'm trying to remember the name of the lock it stands on the shores of a lock a lock and I'm, I'm trying to remember it but i can't remember what it but it's just such a beautiful location yeah. and he wrote tom moore wrote a beautiful description of of it i mean it not he didn't seem to be liked by many people. I mean, uh, uh, St. John Gogarty uh, said, said the, uh, didn't have a, he said, he, I think Oliver St. John Gogarty described him as he looked, he looked like a boiled ghost. <laughs> and uh, and I'm saying Yates said he looked like his face had been carved out of a turnip, <laughs> but, uh, but he was, a, he was a wonderful poet. <laughs> so, uh, 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 Gogarty there, I know one interesting fact, I think he won a bronze medal in the Olympics. Did he? Yeah, literature. Ah, ah the literature. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it was part of the Olympics. That's, I don't know if that's. I, I don't know. If I could yeah. be making fun. That's what I read up about a castle close to there, Moor Hall. That was in yeah. County Galway there. Um, but yeah, that, that's one interest. And yeah, you said children there. You know, uh, yeah. ch children uh, mostly blamed now for demonic energy. Uh, uh, 
manifestations at the moment <laughs> for chucking stuff around there. Like I know with my four-year-old child and three-year-old, they chuck everything around there. You know, yeah. kids, the children, you know, we talk all that, you know. So I'm, I'm blabbing on them. So I'm used to the kids today. Let's yeah. Get a shout, uh, few shout-outs there. So we got Eddie, Eddie Claude. Uh, Eddie says, um, "Hi guys." Hi, Eddie. We've got Cameron. Cameron, hello, Cameron. Another team member of Ghost there. There's evening guys there. And we've got Sinead, uh, Lindsay Critchley, who, who's been to London recently there. And uh, she enjoys, she loves you there, Richard. There, like she loves most, and anything most haunted. Yeah. Um, so um, I just go through uh, what, what's with back, to my, back to most haunted there. Um, the. Uh, did you, uh, with the live shows, was there anything, you know, particularly with the live shows, um, is, what were your memories of the live shows, um, especially with the rest of the Most Haunted crew there? I know you were a person that was mainly, you didn't really get in, uh, involved in all the uh, the stuff the crew were doing on the site. You were yeah. mainly doing the history part there. Yeah. Um, I was trapped with, in the studio. Yeah. The there. <laughs> uh, how, when they, how I know I watched some of the shows, but how accurate were most of the mediums there going about the information? Uh, the, uh, there was a lot of lot of good information came back. Uh, the, the, it, it was always difficult because my my job wasn't so much. I mean, it was Matthew. Uh, Matthew was meant to be the skeptic, so he was the one who had to sort of um, argue against everything. Uh, my my job was simply, as stuff came in, was to check the history and, and be able to sort of comment on the history. And it was actually quite. It was quite the quite a challenging task because there the, the was genuinely there was no. We, you know, I, I had no prior communication. I didn't know what was going to come up. Uh, I had to try and guess what might come up. So I had to study the location and find names and everything. But I just did. I, I, I never. And I, the thing I always remember was I was never allowed access to the internet. So, so, so when I was in the studio, it was genuinely uh, sometimes seat of the pants stuff because I, I had to get documents from the local libraries. I had to go around. I had to think, well, what will come up tonight? Uh, and then take them back, uh, and then if something did come up, I could then flick through them. Okay, but, uh, that's interesting. I, yeah, but I had a, I, I yeah. didn't have that much time to do it. I mean, that that yeah. was the worst yeah. bit. <laughs> and it was yeah, a, and you're only given about twenty minutes or so there. Yeah, and, and you also get told you you get told in your because you get the earpiece and, and you get told uh, uh, we're get we're we're coming to you in five, <laughs> and, so, and if you haven't actually found anything. <laughs> <laughs> and you, and, and it's it's like the gallows. It's like it's hanging yeah. over you. Think, <laughs> you <gotta find laughs> something quick. You know. yeah. <laughs> oh, no. um, we have a question from Michael there. Uh, Michael Ryan. Hi, Michael. Um, he's asked that he went to Charleville Castle. Now that's featured in one of the episodes there. Our most haunted. He was there a few years back, a few months back, and he saw a young girl on top of the stairs. Uh, he says, was it because I knew of the girl or was it a ghost I saw? Now, ah. Yeah, I, I think I knew, yeah, there's a girl that's Charleville Castle there, that's Harriet. So I there is, yeah. Yeah, Bob, bon, bon, yeah. is it bon, Bonnie, I think, Bonnie, the American lady uh, who, who went. Uh, to be honest, yeah. I, I, I wasn't on the, because that, was that was an episode, so I, it wasn't was alive. Episode. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but I did, I did, when I did haunted castles of Britain Island. I did go to Charleville Castle and uh, and and did meet her. She she literally just taken over when I went there, uh, and she was telling me all about the girl on the stairs. And she's uh, oh. so so yeah. So I I don't know, it, it would be difficult for me to say because obviously I, I wasn't there in the circumstances of Mike that Michael that you might have seen or uh, seen her, but uh, and what, any what was your I uh, actually. Just goes uh, veering off the question for a bit. Just in regards to the information that you found on the show that was coming through, what like did you were you surprised by men, uh, any of it? Did anything like stand out for you? There's a few things that came through. Uh, there were a few. There was a couple of times where names came through, and I couldn't. I I, I had no knowledge of them, and okay, then yeah. I I found out about them later. Yeah. <laughs> there was uh, there was of course there was the famous. Uh, <laughs> There was the famous Dick Turpin uh, Mary Loves Dick episode. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was, the iconic one, yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was one of my favourite. Uh, yeah. And then 
<laughs> there was uh, there was one very strange one which uh, happened um, uh, in Torquay when we were doing the the Torquay one, uh, and it's uh, I'd gone down to the library to try and find out because I thought well we were on the Cornish coast and smugglers at shipwrecks. There's yeah. got to, got to be something coming up on shipwrecks. So I went down to the library and I took out all the uh, or got the names of anyone I could who drowned in a shipwreck around the Cornish coast because I thought well something like that's bound to come come up in in, in a Cornwall. Uh, and I will, I put them in a folder and it, and went back to the studio. And when I went in, Derek was just inside the door having a coffee. And uh, he was sitting, and he went, hello, Rich. all right, Rich. And he was, I mean, Derek was, lo- he was a lovely man. He really was. He was one of the nicest people I've ever worked with. And, uh, and he went, all right there, Rich. And I said, yeah, yeah. And he said, and he's sipping his coffee. And uh, as I walked past, he took a sip of coffee and he, and he spat it out. He was, oh, he said, someone's put salt in my coffee. And I said, what? <laughs> he said, salt in my coffee. And... Uh, he said, have a taste. And I had a taste. And he said, uh, what's that? I said, it's coffee. He said, salt, it's salt in it. And I thought, weird. And, and then, it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, then it, but then it suddenly struck me that yeah. under my arm, and it was a folder he couldn't have seen into, but under my arm were the names of all the people who drowned in the sea uh, off Cornwall. Okay. Uh, and salt water. <laughs> so yeah, it, yeah. Uh, and that, yeah. That, that was that was that was weird. That was one of the weird things that happened uh, yeah. during the time. Yeah. I get and yeah, no, sorry, go ahead, Andy. Yeah, sorry, yeah. So and just like one episode, like um, that I was talking to you about, there is Pendle Hill in 2004 and um, Halloween, and I think it was the second night there. And what I can remember of that there, like it was the first probably for national TV television that was that everyone had any seen a seance live on TV or the glass move around so wildly there and all the and the team was getting picked up. Uh, apparently, was it the uh, them die? Was it witches? Was it, was yeah. It, uh, in situation, what was it like in the studio audience? And in the studio uh, on that one, it was a uh, because it's, it's always di- it was always difficult in the studio because you never actually knew. Uh, obviously, we weren't at the location; uh, we could see what was happening, but obviously, we couldn't feel what was happening. But what I can say is that when they came back, because uh, basically, I mean, the, we the show used to finish just after midnight. Uh, and then it would take us an hour to get back to where we were staying. Then we used to, we 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 did you know we had to recover in the bar at the end. So uh, we we we, we, we <laughs> so you'd, the, there was some great after after show um, uh, <laughs> enter uh, drinkies and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and, but when they came back, that was the one time where, and especially I think was it John Gilbert, the sound man anyway, who was really affected. He was still affected by it. Uh, I mean, normally he was very gregarious, very very chatty, but he really was. Uh, uh, wasn't he wasn't drinking wasn't in he was just sitting he really was shocked by it so genuinely he was he was affected and it was such a cliffhanger there like you know at the end of the hit midnight the glass flew off and the vet yeah. screamed and it was off he was like what <laughs> yeah. what's happening <laughs> you know it's so amazing go, go yeah ahead, sorry you want to ask a question? Or... Um, yeah, just like in regards to that episode there. I mean, um, did, uh, did you continue on like looking for information afterwards or after, like, do you just kind of stop? Did you just stop at that stage after the third episode or? No, I carry. I, I did carry on. Uh, on on every episode, uh, whenever, whenever I did that, I, I did always, I, I'm one of those people. I don't, I don't like, <laughs> I don't like not knowing something. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and so it's almost a challenge. If something comes up, I've, I've got to think, well, you know, d- d- you know, should I have should I have known that? Should I have known that? So I would I would carry on. I would I would actually um, I mean, once I got out, I could go back. I could go online and see if I'd missed anything there, you know, uh, but also I could go back to the libraries and, and or, or write to people and say, you know, did this happen? And of course, it was also a great thing for me for the books as well, because things could then come up. And it, it's one of those things with haunted locations that you you'll talk to somebody at one location, and they'll say, "Oh, you should talk to such and such at, uh, at that location." I, I remember Abba Glasny, uh, which I, we didn't do as a live one, uh, but they did it as a, as a studio. But before that, I'd actually uh, I'd actually gone there. I was I, I I think I'm almost certain I was the first author to actually. To, to put Abba Glasny as a haunted house into one of the books, into a book. Okay. And, and the reason I did it was simply because I, 
the way I used to write books was I used to just go on the road and I'd just try, I'd just drive to places and then I'd stop off. If I saw like a castle or a pub, I'd stop off and I'd just say, hey, you got any ghosts here? Any, go any ghosts? Yeah. <laughs> and it's, and it's, uh, just collecting. It's right, yeah. You know, yeah. You know, I've got to go by people or people say that. Yeah. They've got nothing to search on like. Yeah, and I, I got some great stories uh, uh, that way. And I'd gone to Dylan Thomas's to the boathouse, Dylan Thomas's boathouse, because I was going to. I'm, I'm a great fan of Dylan Thomas, so uh, I, I went to Lawn, uh, and uh, there's the lady there said, "Oh, she said uh, there was a program on last night about a house they've just opened up, uh, and it was just opening, and they 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 so she couldn't remember what it was called. She, so <laughs> I literally I, I went asking everywhere." Do you know about this house? It was on telly last night. And then I had this brilliant idea to go and see the uh, the the constabulary at the local police station. Uh, I thought, well, if anybody will know about it, they will know what, what it is. And it was. It turned out they knew and they directed me to Abbot Glasney. And I, and I went there. And it was the most incredible because the, the archaeologists were still in there. And I actually met what, the guy who was doing the head surveyor. He was with one of the archaeologists. But he was really interesting because he said, well, they'd found some standing stones buried under one of the floors in Everglasney and they'd actually taken taken it out uh, and uh, they I can't remember the word he used now it wasn't that, it was a blessing that's right they they got someone into a blessing on the house because they they thought that there, there might be spirits there but it was just incredible and I I just felt so good to have because it's one it's one well and good to find houses and locations that are people know about but it's yeah. always that nice thing it's almost like you've written a song when you get when you've got the story the first time and then yeah. you know and it's you can trace that back and say yeah it wasn't it wasn't anywhere before before i put it in that book so that that was always very nice uh, and amber glasney nice, that's one of them nice to uncover something new yeah um, yeah like uh, some of the investigations we've done we we have to put it in a book in the future there we covered some sort of history the location we did it was a room building and it was to do with the hellfire club um, ah. it, was a, it was a big hellfire club that was on the west of the country and it was supposed to be bigger than one in dublin yeah uh, but the house was stuck to, to come find the link to it and it was said in the internet through books that the building was built in the 1780s that the owner mm -hmm. did know about the hellfire club and said that was built in 74 and then it was linked to the hellfire club beginning and the west of Ireland. Um, it's interesting. I'll talk about that another stage. Now. Yeah. But, uh, I've just got a few, few shouts out. So we got Siobhan Gallagher. Gallagher says hi. Hi Siobhan. How are you doing? Um, um, just as well. Just Michael's come back with a question there as well. Did you ever do a live show at Pendle Hill? Ah. <laughs> um, I, I did. Well, yeah. Well. <laughs> I can, see, I can see him. Hi, 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 Eddie. Hi, Cameron. Hi, Lindsay. Hi, hi Michael. Hi, right Michael. There you are. You're, you're worse. You're very bad, Richard. There you are. Say, <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to say we got a quiz tonight, there, folks. And uh, with the quiz, you're going to enter a draw for a, uh, a special prize coming in the start of October. So here is the. It's like a kind of hangman thing there. So it's. The clue to this, this is a monic, and it's underscore, underscore, I, underscore, N, new word, underscore, underscore, R, underscore. So it's the famous monic. So it's underscore, underscore, I, underscore, N, new word, underscore, underscore, R, underscore. And this is a, a famous monic. Now, if you don't get it during the show, if you can... The first one to get it after the show, you can enter a prize draw. Uh, well, yeah, really win, you win an answer, ancient yeah. castle as well. <laughs> it should be too hard if you're into monics there. Uh, you should be able to get this there. Uh, so, should I just but, uh, quickly go over how you can contact us there? Uh, yeah, so you can do a quick, quick and easy way of contacting us is just comment underneath. Um, this live that's happening right now. Don't be afraid, write your name. If you're part of a team or if you're affiliated with a group, um, write that beside your name as well, if, if you'd like to know who you are. Um, or if you're a little bit shy and you don't want to write underneath here, yeah, uh, you can head to our website and you can give us an email or you can give us an email actually, that's a lot quicker. Uh, ghost underscore era 66 at yahoo.com. 
Uh, so, uh, yeah. Also, also yeah. got Boris Johnson and he says hi. Oh, he's here again, is he? Yeah, <laughs> Have we got Boris? Andrew, <laughs> Boris yeah. Andrew, Andrew Merkel he's, says hi. He's taking a break, yeah. And, and he just and stumbled Merkel across here. And Boris Johnson said goodbye there, so there we go. <laughs> good old, good old Boris, good old Boris. <laughs> just, just, Angela came in. He just and the Queen. <laughs> so uh, we just have a little giggle with that. There, like, oh, Zach Baggins coming on later on. We'll have a chat with him. Nah, there you are. <laughs> so we got. Uh, so we Can you ask Boris that? where my furlough loan is? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting one either. No. Yeah. <laughs> So we're talking about Derek Akora's uh, ghost from stairs. So um, if anybody wants to uh, ask Richard a question, please do. Um, we, what was your memories of Derek? Uh, well, as, as I said earlier, I mean, he, he was a wonderful per I mean, the first time I met him uh, was uh, it was the Dick Turpin one. Uh, and that one was we we were up in York uh, and they were coming up from London. So I didn't actually meet, meet Derek till 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 the um, uh, till the last night when they when they came up uh but now from from then on uh he, he was he was absolutely a wonderful person he, he was he was he was warm and one thing one thing about Derek was that he was he he loved the fans uh there's a lot of lot of people who you know I remember I, I used to hate going for breakfast with him when we were you know because I'm, I'm, I think it was we were a miss when we did the misty one the ghost uh, uh the witch find the general and I remember me and I went for breakfast with him uh, and it took forever to get to the bre- to the get to break. I was starving, and it took forever because everybody wanted to talk to him. And Derek Derek always had time for everybody, uh, and so you would stop and chat. And you know, and I, and I, there's me thinking, God, I'm starving. <laughs> uh, but no, he, he he had time for everybody, and he was uh, he, he was warm. He was he, he had a great sense of humour as well. And and I always remember in Stratford, one of my uh, when we were in Stratford, because uh, I'm also a member of the Magic Circle as well. And, I'm going to talk uh, to you about magic, but I didn't. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty <laughs> no, cool I, topic. I, yeah, I knew, yeah. I knew, I knew you did, and then it went out. Of my, I didn't know. I didn't go out of my mind. I wasn't too sure because I got put off with that other Richard Jones. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> well, that was that was it. I was I, I was quite big until the other year. <laughs> <laughs> You're number one. Literally. When I won Britain's Got Talent, yeah. yeah. There's, there's probably people people watching now who's going, God, he's changed since Britain's Got Talent. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, the, it's the rock and roll life, rice, lifestyle, yeah. I tell you. <laughs> but, but no, but one thing I, I did in Stratford, I used to, I used to really, and I used to make his cigarettes disappear. So he'd be oh, smoking yeah. a cigarette and I'd say, oh, I'll just, uh, and I'd pop him and I'd go, and, and it would vanish. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. And that, that that's what I, uh, and he was fascinated to know how I'd done that. <laughs> and I never told him, but uh, as I say, we uh, we became quite quite good friends after that. We had, we had, we had some uh, really nice chats, but I always found he was always lovely. He was always warm. And uh, you know he was uh, it was such such uh, I mean really a, ma- a major loss. So he was such a such a lovely man. I know it's uh, I met I, I, yeah, I went to a show of his and I remember seeing him at the end and uh, talking to him. I remember because he used to do uh, on English radio uh, with James Whale. I don't know the DJ this show, yeah. James Whale he used to do live. This was before Most Haunted. He used to come on the show and do live readings at night time there. And I said, I listen, I listen to you there, Derek, and you're an amazing person there. I'll be in tuning in next week to the James Wells show. And he went, oh, oh. like he smiled and nodded. Yeah. And went, oh, thank you. I got his autograph, and he's, I think it was a security guard off the hall, or I forget now, uh, security. He had a his security guard, like he did. Yeah. No, but, he's on bodyguard, is it? I was about, he, he helped if uh, Derek, it was on the most haunted shows, if Derek collapsed there, like, you know, got. Um, Taken yeah. Over but um, fond memories of Derek there. And how did you? Did, so you worked together obviously in Derek Cause Ghost Town. So did you yeah. approach you or? Did, uh, did, did yeah. How did that come about? How did that come about? Uh, uh, it was it was quite weird actually because because uh, we both we because <laughs> I I I I, decided I wanted to leave. I, I wanted to leave. Mo- I was going to leave Most Haunted after Jack the Ripper anyway. Uh, I've enjoyed it, and I was going to. Le- uh, I was going to leave, and I, so I decided I'll, I'll, I'll go on ha- on Halloween after I've done Jack the Ripper. Uh, <laughs> but then uh, I, I was sort of upstage by everybody else leaving. Derek, David Bull, and <laughs> Derek. 
score at oh. both both left at the same time, and I was quite <laughs> quite minor compared to them. So, oh. so, uh, so I don't think anyone even noticed I'd gone. <laughs> but it's, uh, oh, but, but uh, then about a year later. Derek had been uh, offered Ghost Towns by uh, Richard Wolf from Living uh, Living TV, uh, and it was Paul. Was it Paul? It was, yeah, Paul Flexton from uh, Ruggy Media. Uh, had uh, w w they were going to do it. Uh, so constantly, I just got the phone call from uh, from uh, Ruggy saying, "Would you Would you come up and do a Derek Acora's Ghost Towns?" Uh, and so, uh, so I did. Uh, I did. We did it. We did the live one, and it was uh, yeah. It, it, it was it was nice. It was a nice setup. It was nicely the, nicely the way it was done. Yeah, I used to particularly like, yeah, I used to, love, I used to love the ones where they used to turn up at people's houses and, and, yeah. uh, and I, and I can't, I can't remember who, who, it, where it was. Uh, it might, I can't remember which one it was. It might have been Brad, Bradford, uh, but there's one we did where we, where we were, we were there. and, uh, and the guy whose house he went to was obviously stoned. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> and, and you you could just see the guy's eyes okay just, and, and then and then derek derek a corner cora turned up on his doorstep and it was, so that and you just we just watch it because it was actually a, the nice thing about the studio was that we we all, we were watching on the big screen so uh, you you see so you'd see all the things and you could see and you'd see people's faces that you know they maybe weren't aware of the expressions that were, that, that, that were around them because a a lot of the times we're in the dark but also because you know they're not really, they're sort of concentrating on what they're doing not on who's around them but of course you could see it all on the big screen and uh, so yes yeah, so, uh, a lot of my favorite moments are those moments in between when we're just watching on the screen and something would happen that they the, probably weren't even aware of it happened, but everyone in the studio saw it, and then you get this sudden howl of laughter from the audience and, uh, uh, as, as as everyone's watching it. So it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was yeah, but Ghost, Ghost Towns, yeah, and Ghost Towns was a willing, yeah, and there was and there was some lovely people. I mean, there was Danny, I think Daniela Westbrook was on the first yeah. one, Marlene and uh, class Marlene one. Class came in, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Where are where is she now? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be on the piano there, like, I don't know. That's it, yeah. <laughs> or, or hearsay, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, uh, we've got a couple of questions. Um, I think this is just to do with the quiz. Sorry, uh, Richard, what's uh, my question? The letter is, yeah. Can you tell me, is it in Irish or English mornings, and can you give the letters again? Um, well, I can tell you that it might not be English, so if you, you might, that's going to be a big giveaway there. Like. Oh, that's uh, interesting. Okay. okay. And uh, Lindsay says again, was what is that two days you, slideshow? Yeah. He's like generally you. a lovely man and like you say, Richard had time for everyone. Yeah. Oh Jews and just Is that for Richard? Sorry. Oh Richard, I thought you said like me. <laughs> Richard, <laughs> I have time for everyone there. Yeah. So, <laughs> well you have. You have. I, <laughs> I do at the moment I do. <laughs> so uh, I just go I've got, I've that. just got time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we just uh, oh uh, Michelle Michelle's coming on next week there uh, from back in time. Uh, question for your what location? I just put this up. Uh, what location is on your bucket list that you would love to investigate that you haven't had access yeah. to yet? Terror of London. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> it's very <laughs> off limits. How about you, Richard? I love I love the Tower of London. I mean, I, I do guide uh, I do guide tours inside the tower. God, you got uh, two guided tours everywhere. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. I tell, it is. Right, right. I tell, yeah. The only thing I don't like about it is that. Uh, funnily enough, though, uh, just before the lockdown happened, I, I went to the uh, I went to the tower because I was meant to be doing a a tower for a, a tower tour for a couple on the Sunday after. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, it was meant to be the Sunday, but it transpired. It ended up being cancelled, cancelled, but I hadn't been there for a couple of months, so I went to do a recce, uh, and it, the, it was the quietest I'd ever seen it. You know, you almost had the place to yourself walking around, uh, and I suppose so. That's that's probably the closest I've ever come to doing that uh, inside the Tower of London. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. yeah. But now there's so many locations. Uh, I'd, 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 I'd I'd love to. I, I'd love to spend the night on a battlefield. I, know, there's, <laughs> I think oh, I think exactly. battlefields fascinating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, one. True, yeah. Yeah. yeah, one of my favourite locations was the hill of Tar I'm, the hill of Tara. I, I, I oh, absolutely yeah. I, I very love, mystical, love that, yeah. magical yeah. experience. Yeah, I was up there one, one um, Halloween actually. The little bonfire, yeah. and it was kind of 
you were brought back in time, you know, it feels very, you know, pagan. It was very kind of a pagan sort of vibe going on up there. Yeah, so it's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, I yeah. mean, so many wonderful locations. I mean, then, you know, if you look at Britain and Ireland, you know, and, and Ireland, I mean, there's just fantastic places. We're so lucky. Uh, Britain and Ireland, we're so lucky to have such history. So, yeah, we're so, we're so bad to each other. That makes good history. It is. It's um, uh... <laughs> it's probably gruesome murders and all that, you know. Yeah. What about you? Uh, Actually, Anthony, what about you? What uh, place would you like to do? Oh, I like the same, like the Tower of London would be amazing. That'd be like, pretty my, cool. Wife Jennifer, yeah. My wife Jennifer was there and she said, oh, it was, you know, she was trying to hide from all the rest of the tours. <laughs> and she, was just, <laughs> going, she said, I think it was, um, I forget what she said now, I think it was where the flowers were. I don't know if this was to do with Anne Boleyn, but it was like where, supposedly where she was buried or something like that. Oh, right, yeah. I'm not too sure, the White Tower, I don't know what it was, but I'm not too sure about but uh, yeah, definitely. How about a new same for you, Sinead? Would be there. And uh, let me see if any other place now. Here in Ireland, would I like to do anywhere in particular? It probably, let me just see. Some probably building in Dublin that's probably closed off. Like one of the theatres here in Dublin, mm. I probably would do, let me think, the, uh, the Olympia. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, so like the Theatre ghosts yeah. are fantastic. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. Oh, no. I'll just quickly do this, Richard, just for Michael there. So it's underscore underscore I underscore N new word underscore underscore R underscore, and that's the good place. Uh, I'm just I'm just googling. <laughs> To go Get today. yourself onto Google immediately. I will. I'm on there now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I got told uh, so, uh, in, in the Theatre Royal Haymarket where they've got uh, uh, with, uh, uh, Buckstone, who haunts it, who's the theatre manager that was ch one of yeah. Charles Dickens' best friends. Uh, but he was uh, one of the people who saw him was Donald Sindon. And, uh, and about uh, just 2009, I went and spent three days at Donald Sindon's house with him to to in, to record him for a, a TV uh, a series on uh, theatres he was making uh, so I, I spent three days with him and he was telling me all the ghostly things that happened with actors uh, that happened in theatres but he's quite fa he's the name for the person who actually saw uh, the ghost uh, and all the books from the 50s and 60s always talk about Donald Sindon's experience. And I'd covered it in Walking Haunted London, and I'd covered it in Haunted London as well. But I'd just said, you know, Sir Donald Sindon, never thinking I'd, I'd actually ever meet him. But then we went and did the, the, the theatre film, and, and I actually stood with him on the spot where he saw the ghost, and he told me the story there by that window. He said, yeah, I was coming down. I, I, I won't even try his voice, but I was coming down this staircase here. And and John was on stage, but I thought he ran past me. And it was, it was such a fantastic story to, to actually have the story told by, by him uh, on, on that spot. And then I think it was just before we, or it's either just after or just before we'd done it, uh, Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen were doing uh, Waiting for Goddard on the stage there. And I think it was, I think it was Ian McKellen saw the ghost uh, and just stopped and wow. looked over, over wow. the shoulder. Yeah. And he saw the ghost there as well. So now there's, uh, uh, but that, that was a wonderful series because of who Donald Sindon was. We got access backstage to all the theatres, so we were, we went down under the Phantom of the Opera, right under the stage of Phantom of the Opera. Oh, wow. We were up in the in the wings of the Theatre Royal Drury Lane, and it was just fantastic. So, and he was another he was another lovely man as well. He was uh, sm smoked like a trooper. I always remember. I he was, I yeah. some, well, was, I was looking back on those haunted Drury Lane. There, I think, yeah, that was yes, great. Yeah, that's I, a really good that's episode. The Theatre Royal Drury, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's one of the first ones I did watch, yeah. yeah. Um, so we're going to talk about Mr. Ripper, Jack ah. Ripper. So we're going to let him loose. Never heard of know, him. Who's that? Never heard of him. <laughs> 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 it's a, it's a guess who? Uh, I'm just going to play a bit of a clip. This is from Richard, I think. Richard, is it? From Unmasking uh, Jack the Ripper. I'll show the, um, the footage anyway there. So this is going for you folks there. You'll see it coming up there. Um, this is a little bit of a video to... I've just moved.
At around 3.40 a.m. on August 31st, 1888, a carter named Charles Cross was walking along Bucks Row here in Whitechapel, when in a gateway that used to stand here, he saw what he took to be a bundle lying on the ground. Thinking it was a tarpaulin that might prove useful, he went over to inspect it, but stopped in his tracks when he saw it was a woman lying there. Moments later, he heard footsteps behind him, and turning, saw another carter, Robert Paul, approaching. Nervously, the two men approached the silent form and stooped down over the body. Charles Cross felt the woman's hands. They were quite cold. Robert Paul, meanwhile, was leaning over, trying to see if he could detect any sign of breath. He couldn't. But when he touched the chest, he fancied it moved slightly. I think she's breathing, he told his companion, but very little, if she is. Paul wanted to sit the woman up, but Charles Cross didn't want to touch the body any further. So they thought they'd wasted enough time at the scene, so they pulled her skirts down to cover her decency and went on their way, agreeing to tell the first policeman they met of their find. But what neither man had noticed in the darkness was that the woman's throat had been cut so savagely that her head had almost been severed from her body. That discovery was made by PC John Neal as he walked his beat along Bucks Row shortly after Cross and Paul had left the scene. It was he who raised the alarm and sent for local medic Dr. Llewellyn, who having carried out a cursory examination of the body, gave orders for its removal to the mortuary. Here, the night held a further shock, for when Inspector Sprattling arrived to take down a description of the deceased, he discovered something that had so far eluded everyone. Beneath her bloodstained clothing, a deep gash ran along her abdomen. She had been disemboweled. Jack the Ripper's reign of terror had begun. It's very good, isn't it? <laughs> I, 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 I like it. I like him. I like him. It's, it's, <laughs> Is he? He's, he's get, me, very, get, me, get me in touch with him quickly. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's a very young man. I've hardly changed. <laughs> but, um, so that was uh, Mary Nichols, uh, reputedly the first um, murder that happened with Jack the Ripper. Um, so with, with the Jack the Ripper, is it, is it, would we still have this, if it was discovered, the murderer was, would we still have this mystery? Would it still be in the one for longer? I, <laughs> I think if he had been discovered, we would never have the mystery. I yeah. think now, well, he's he's not going to be discovered because, um, um, barring a miracle, we've got no evidence uh, left against mm. anybody, and all the people, unless there's a very old serial killer wandering around, uh, <laughs> he's long since gone. Uh, but it, I, I, I suppose if the name was revealed, then it would lose an element of its mystery but I, I just think it's too entrenched now it's it's the ultimate uh, crime spree and if you look at serial killers they have caught i mean the the bundy in it they're, they're making tv series on netflix about them aren't they so right. the fact, yeah. I, th I think the fact we know someone who's who someone was means that uh, doesn't necessarily mean that we won't be interested and jack the ripper opens up so much about victorian history as well so i think yeah, yeah i i i i think it, it would uh, it's it'd stop everybody trying to write books about who he was, but um, yeah, sure. <laughs> but, so you started doing the tours back in the eighties, was it? Were you so 19, you were the first? The first even, one. Oh, yeah, nineteen eighty-two. I was even younger than in that video. I oh yeah, you were. <laughs> <laughs> and he kept them going. And how many suspects are there in total? I don't know. Ooh. It's like ten or something. I'm not too sure. No, now. There's, hun there's hundreds. There's hundreds. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, it runs into the hundreds. And at the time, there, there were lots of. Uh, there was hardly a day went by when somebody didn't confess to being the killer, or yeah, yeah. they didn't catch someone, or somebody didn't dob someone in for being the killer. So yeah. I mean, it would run into the hundreds, and they're, they're, they range from the uh, intriguing to the absolutely bizarre. Bizarre ones, yeah. And in the last couple of years, was there somebody um, that popped up and said they had a linen cloth that was passed <laughs> down through the ages and they started doing DNA tests on it or something? Oh dear, how can I be uh, discreet about this one? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or diplomatic about this one? Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it, <laughs> it's the famous shawl. Uh, yeah, that's um, the one, yeah. Basically, what, what happened was that the, the story behind the shawl is that uh, 
Catherine Eddowes was murdered in Mitre Square in the city. And the police constable called, I think it was Amos Simpson. I've just completely blanked on the name, but I think it was Amos Simpson. Yeah. Uh, went into the square and found the shawl, which was covered in blood and semen. Yeah. Uh, and, and apparently a sergeant told him he could take it home for his wife as a present uh, because she she was interested in needlework and he thought it would be a nice thing for her to. So he took this shawl home to his wife, who uh, who didn't really see the romance in the gesture of being given a blood-stained semen stained shawl. <laughs> so she told him to get it out of her presence. And apparently put it in, the story is he put it into storage. Uh, and uh, and then, well, basically, the, it was then split it, split up. And one portion of the shawl was the one that was bought by the author, who uh, he bought at auction in 2007 and then subjected to DNA analysis uh, or had it sent to a... a and I've just again forgotten the name of the chap who did it, but it was a, uh, I think it was, it was a, in Liverpool anyway. Uh, he did the DNA analysis and then said that it was, Kath they uh, then compared it to uh, DNA from one of Catherine's descendants, Catherine yeah. Edwards Dennis, yeah. and the main police suspect at the time, Aaron Kosminski, one of his descendants, uh, and it got a 100% match, so yeah. he said. But yeah. then it turned out that the decimal point that was the exact match was actually in the wrong place. Oh. Uh, so whereas, so it, it, it basically could have been anybody from Eastern Any Europe. Yes, that's, that was quite so, yeah. yeah. And and then the other big debate is Catherine Edwards was murdered in the city of London. Amos Simpson was in fact a Metropolitan Police Constable. He wasn't even involved in the hunt for the Ripper, but he wouldn't have got been in the city of London, and he certainly wouldn't have taken something away from the square. And then. It's probably not a shawl even. We, I mean, there's all sorts well, of debate about that. its age. There's one is that it's a table runner, like a long tablecloth for the halls. So, uh, uh, but um, it, it it led to a, when it came out, was it 2014, 2015? It led to a much more interest in Jack the Ripper. So, hey. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> keep exactly. it going. <laughs> and there's, uh, there's he murdered, and there was an Irish woman who was supposed to have murdered as well. Mary Kelly, the last victim. Mary yeah, and, yeah. Uh, from Limerick, from Limerick. She was from Limerick. She was from Limerick. Yeah, she was from Limerick. And, um, and, and then, go ahead, you know. Yeah, I was just thinking, like, all the women who were killed, murdered, even, um, not like, not all of them were prostitutes. Some people believe that all of them were, like, women of the night. Is that true? Or what? It, it's, a, it's a tricky one. Uh, yeah. It's a tricky one. Uh, personally, I, I, well, personally, I don't like the word prostitute for yeah, them. Yeah, but it's kind of a, uh, a bit of a derogatory yeah, sort of. Yeah, yeah. I, I I prefer the Victorian term for them, which was unfortunates, because these it, these yeah. were five women who'd fallen. Basically, they 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 were all alcoholics. Uh, yeah. They'd all fallen through the net. Uh, what what you're referred to is a, a new book that came out last year called The Five, which uh, uh, which argues that they were they weren't prostitutes. Uh, okay. And that, yeah. uh, it's misogyny and. Uh, but yes, the honest truth is when you when you read uh, uh, the the inquest reports witnesses uh, talking about them uh, I, I would, they, they probably weren't what we would call sex workers today that it was a career choice but they were forced into doing it out of necessity and the point yeah. is uh, and this this is this is an important thing about Jack the Ripper that a lot of people don't don't think of is that it wasn't the Ripper who chose the murder sites, it was the victims. Uh, now, the argument there is that he, yeah. they were sleeping at the locations because they were homeless. Uh, but we know, for example, Mary Nichols, that she said that she was going to get her DOS money at one o'clock in the morning. And, uh, well, all the witnesses said that, that, she, that, that all met, sorry, not all the witnesses, but a few of the witnesses suggested. That, see, the other problem is that a lot of witnesses didn't want to speak ill of the dead. So consequently, you'd get things like, well, what did, what did she do for a living? And you'd get things like, well, I had my doubts. She would out late at night an awful lot. Yeah. So I think the property is that they were, they were selling themselves for sex. Uh, and unfortunately, that led them into the arms of Jack or into the clutches of Jack the Ripper. Yeah. Uh, but of course, the thing is, it, 
if that's the case, they were the ones who took him to the murder sites because they, they, what they were doing, they knew where to take him, where they weren't going to be interrupted. So he didn't yeah. choose the murder sites, they did. Uh, and uh, yeah. yeah, but it's a big. It's a big debate. I mean, it's caused a lot of. Um, there's a lot of debate as to whether they were prostitutes to the point now where on tours when I talk about it, I do get pe people will. I'll wait for it now. People will. Someone will put out. No, 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 no. They weren't prostitutes. Uh, the problem is that the evan. If you look at the evidence and the evidence that's presented to suggest they weren't, uh, like quotes from witnesses, it's been slightly cut off to actually get rid of mentions when they were of them being prostitutes but no when you when you read it and you read what people said about them then it's almost certain as i say i, I don't like the term prostitutes uh, they yeah. certainly weren't sex workers but i think casually if if there's if it meant it was the money to eat and get a uh, and sadly to get a drink as well then that's what they would do yeah, yeah so there's different situations different times we've done that yeah. There's something to do with um, in Monto, like in Dublin. Was one of the yeah, we have like similar in yeah, area. It's it part of Dublin. Yeah, but they've kind of wiped it all underneath the carpet. They've kind of forgotten about that time. We ha used yeah. to have a huge red light district in Ireland, actually, in Dublin, with like nearly 2,000 prostitutes working uh, within a square mile of each other of, um, back in the 1800s. But the Catholic Church came in and just wiped the whole history away very quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like forgotten about. Yeah. yeah. So just going back to Jack the Ripper oh, there. Um, what uh, well, like interesting discoveries have you found recently? Have you? I know we've been researching this topic for years, and you know, at the back of your hand, like yeah. what interesting? Like, is anything like popped up that you're like, oh wow? <laughs> There's always interesting things to come up on Jack the Ripper. Yeah. I think what, uh, 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 what what I do like is every so often when you read through newspapers, for example, I mean, one of the things about Jack the Ripper is that uh, Jack the Ripper never existed. <laughs> there never I was. I could imagine, yeah. There never was a serial killer called Jack the Ripper. Yeah. <laughs> Jack the Ripper was the name that was put on a letter that was sent yeah, to the yeah. agency. Oh, that was it. Yeah, that was true. Yeah. 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 Jack the Ripper never so, yeah, yeah. And we also honestly do not know how many victims he had. Uh, yeah. So consequently, uh, although it's believed there were five Jack the Ripper victims, the generic file they come under is called the Whitechapel Murders file. And yes. there are 11 names on the Whitechapel Murders file. And okay. the very first one was Emma Smith, who was, uh, well, she was attacked on April the 3rd, 1888, and she died the next day of peritonitis. And uh, when I was doing some research in the, in, in the, in the newspaper archives the other week, I came across an Emma Smith who'd been arrested for soliciting on uh, uh, a commercial road. And she, see, she she's a dead ringer for Emma Elizabeth Smith, who was murdered uh, yeah. in April 1888. And this was in 1881. Uh, and basically, she, she gets arrested, uh, dragged into court and denies everything. Oh, no, I would never do such a thing. That policeman. Yeah. And, and, and in those days, the case, it was the policeman who arrested her who would then present the evidence against her. So he said she did this. And she, she sat in the box saying, you know, that policeman's lying. He's telling lies about me. He's a nasty man. He's a nasty man. And, and then another woman comes into court and st starts haranguing her. And the two of them have a fight in the court. <laughs> and yeah. the magistrates of police are just standing there watching it. And I can, you know... It's the area. It's we know her beat on the on the night she was murdered was from Burdett Road along Commercial Road. Uh, we know um, we know that her, her well the deputy keeper of the lodging house she was staying at, Mary Russell. She said that she was fierce, mad when she was drunk. Uh, so I'm, I'm oh. wondering, it could you know that. And Interesting. Is that yeah. her? So, are we getting a glimpse of a Whitechapel murder victim in life? And then we get a record of Mary Nichols. There's a Mary yeah. Nichols who gets arrested for sleeping rough in Trafalgar Square uh, the year before the murders. Uh, now, we, obviously, we don't know for certain that's the Mary Nichols, but it's when we get this little glimpse of the glimpses of them in life. Uh, yeah, yeah. So things things like that always fascinate me. Uh, as yeah. a person, I mean, I, I mean I'm, I'm not really that bothered about who Jack the Ripper was. I'm more bothered about, A, what it was like in the area, the conditions, and the tragic lives of the women, because, you know, 
we we should always learn from history and uh, these were women who fallen through the net and there was no welfare state to save them so consequently they ended up in the dos at the east end of london doing whatever it took to survive uh, and it was uh, it's tra- i mean the, the, their stories are tragic stories it really is it really is sad i, I think sometimes yeah. it gets glorified uh, and i think sometimes jack the ripper becomes the hero whereas the women themselves should be the heroes are they i think that or the heroines uh, in that case would you like, would you be interested in like say i don't know if hollywood came to you and say would you uh, want to do a jack the ripper um, um, film would you be interested in helping them out with that no no i've, I've never liked no. paul hollywood because i just think yeah, yeah. I, I hate bake off and <laughs> No. <laughs> and and, he, and he, he knows nothing about Jack the Ripper anyway. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I would. Yeah, I think, I think if, uh, if, if, if they came knocking, I mean, who, who wouldn't? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no false modesty here. I'd be there. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got um, Irene G. Smith. Irene's a book fan of the fact she says Jack and Rip got always interesting subject. Uh, we've got Deborah Carroll who says, Hi guys, I am new and look forward to learning new interesting things. Hi Deborah. Hi Deborah, uh, hi Irene. Uh, Michael, if you're there, yeah, if you quickly send a message there, the answer to um you can put the comment up on this page there, you'll be the first one to it, you're nearly there. Um so, which, geez, the hour's gone quick. They're already there. And, you know, I suppose, um, well, is there any, the, the tours of Jack the Ripper there, you're, you, yeah. you're going to be doing a virtual tour soon? Yes, yeah. I'm, uh, I, that's why yeah. I've grown the beard. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm doubling up as a, as, as a gnome. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Perfect. but no, I, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm a week on, uh, is it week on Sunday? I'm launching the virtual Jack the Ripper uh, where, where I've got, a, I've got a lot of high, high definition HD footage of the streets uh, that I've been filming over the years. So I've put it all together and I can actually do it quite a, not this back, back cloth, but I can put a back, I can put it as a back cloth behind me. And lead people wow. through the streets, so uh, and then and, talk about it, and then like this, people can ask questions as well. So, ha- like, how would people be able to find it? Or do you have a website at all? Or I do. Funny, yeah. sh- funny, you should mention that. Yeah, <laughs> here it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. the the easiest, uh, the the best one to go to to get it is rippertour.com. Uh, ripper ripper dot ripper, com. Ripper, yeah. So r i p p e r ripper tour, all one word. dot com, yeah. uh, and that'll take you through to the main website. And at the top of the page, it says uh, "Virtual Jack the Ripper Tour," and uh, you click on that, and it gives you the full details of it and uh, and how to book as well. Uh, and uh, they get a free a free ebook with it as well, 194 oh. page ebook, which I've uh, wow. I've written Very for exciting, it. Exciting, actually. <laughs> it's really really good. Good. <laughs> well, next couple of weeks, on a week of Sunday, I'll put the I'll be contact you there, Rich, and I can put yeah. the link there as well. So people really interested, I'll be interested in seeing that, especially. Yeah. No. And um, I suppose um, I don't know if uh, Michael Ryan's coming back with the answer. So the answer to the question is it was underscore underscore. I just uh, quiz question. Uh, sorry, wrong one. Uh, quiz question was underscore underscore. I underscore N underscore underscore R underscore was a monic. And the answer is, of course, Mr. Matt. Who was this out? I can just see Brian Baru's legs on Richard's top. Well done, Richard. Woo! Richard, you go into the door. (laughs) (laughs) You go into the door for Halloween and. Well, it's about four months' time. I don't know we're probably still being alive then. I don't know if we have been ghosts or something at that time. Um, yeah. Jude, I'm going to say goodbye, but really appreciate this and uh, really thank you for joining us this evening. It's been a yeah, thank you so much for your time. Yes, thank you. Ha- fa- thank, you for, hear, thank you for hear having me. Yes. Thank, thank you for making me feel so bad by showing you me me as a younger man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> here's your comparison. Yeah. Hey, guys, see myself on the screen. Yeah, I know, that's you even younger then. Yeah. Right? yeah, that's but, before, uh, that was that was before I won Britain's Got Talent. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
what I'll do is uh, we'll probably hopefully in the near future have you on the show again there. Yeah, I'd be delighted. So that's uh, Richard Jones, folks. There. And yes, brilliant. Take um, care. Stay safe, yeah. everybody. Two. Um, so, Sinead, um, what we're going to do still here. is so next week we're just going to talk about who we got next week. So next week we brilliant. have yeah. uh, back in time paranormal investigators Mary Nolan and uh, Michelle Connie to leave the questions up. Um, yes, underneath. During the week, sorry, I'm going all crazy here. During the week, who was there? Um, we'll be discussing, it was from the show last week, but unfortunately we were unable to do it. But we'll be discussing uh, people who fake evidence, uh, the new and old ways of communication, and not this all. Yeah. So tune in one. for that next week, next Thursday, probably nine o'clock. Sinead, that was amazing, wasn't it? It was really good. Yeah, really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, could listen to him talk forever about so many, he has so much knowledge about so many historical things and Jack the Ripper even in itself is just a fascinating topic. It's always fascinated me since I was very, very little. So yeah, it was great. And that, that's just the show there, people that are back in time are coming in next yeah, week. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, next week, so, this group will be joining us here. So if you so, have any questions, please send them through. You can email us to question if you want to do so as well. Yeah. And I suppose that's it, folks. And uh, yeah. enjoy the weekend. Oh, and tomorrow night, there, if you want to tune in, there's another show on uh, called The Chronicles of the Supernatural. It's on from 8 p.m. till 10 p.m. And that's with Jared Hughes and Gary Waters. So tune in to that tomorrow evening. It's from 8 p.m. till 10 p.m. The Chronicles of the Supernatural. Cool. Um, so uh, unfortunately, we can't get Zach Baggins. He can't come in. <laughs> yeah, he'll be here one day soon <laughs> when you least expect it. We'll bring him in there. So we're going to say uh, slang of all and see you again. And uh, have a nice day, folks. Uh, yeah. Enjoy your day. Yeah. Take care. Bye. Bye.